Welcome to Losing a Child, Always Andy's Mom. On this podcast, we journey through the devastating experience of the death of a child. Grief is seldom discussed openly in our culture, and the death of a child makes people feel even more uncomfortable. We approach the topic openly and honestly, speaking to people who have lost loved ones and experts who help care for them. Whether you are a parent experiencing loss or someone who wants to support another going through this tragedy, this podcast strives to offer hope and help. Welcome to episode 134 of Losing a Child, Always Andy's Mom. I'm Marcy Larson, Andy's mom. Now, I have to start this episode by admitting that I do not know too much about yoga. In fact, I have done yoga exactly one time, where my dear Aunt Penny, who is a a good listener, so I am doing a little Aunt Penny shout out again, when my Aunt Penny took me to hot yoga, thinking that it would be wonderful for my stress and headaches, and I left with a migraine headache worse than I came with. So that has been my yoga experience in the unbearable heat. This was also many years ago, even before I had children, I think. So I have not been familiar with this recently, and I certainly have not been familiar with a type of yoga that today's guest, Erin, is really offering us that really does a nice blend of Christianity and spirituality with the yoga. I'm actually signed up for her next grief yoga class. So by the time this episode is released, I will have already done this for four weeks. I guess if you were hearing this now, that means it must be going okay. Otherwise, I would have re-recorded this introduction. Before we get started, I also want to take one more opportunity to thank those of you who have donated to our fundraising effort that we've done to try to raise some money to help with podcast production costs. If you have donated, thank you so, so much. It is really, really appreciated. If you haven't yet, know that you can send a text message to the number 53555 and just text the word Andy's mom, all together one word, and that would take you to a website. You can also always go to my website and donate that way as well. So I do appreciate any help that you can give so we can help expand and spread the message even further. Thank you so much, Erin, for coming on the Always Andy's Mom podcast today. Thank you so much for having me here, Marcy. Oh, I'm so excited to be able to hear from you and to hear about your daughter, Dakota. And then I also want to start out by saying, if my listeners remember a few weeks ago, which is now as the time of the recording only last week, Mm -hmm. I put out a little kind of advertisement for Erin. So if you participated in her yoga, this is the yoga lady. This is (laughs) Erin. So if you remember me even putting up that little clip, this is her. And we'll get into that later on in the episode today. But she is doing some pretty amazing yoga work. So keep that in mind as you're listening um, that you may get to participate. I am looking forward to participating. It starts this coming Wednesday. But by the time this airs, I think we will be through that session. So that's fine. I'll be always more. Yeah. There'll always be more oh. yoga every, you know, when I get the energy up, then I'll put it out another series on Zoom. So, it's, it, yeah, you can follow the space. Perfect. Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. And we'll talk about that space and how you can follow a little later in the episode as well. So why don't you start out, though, Erin, by telling us about Dakota? Okay. Dakota was 23 when she left. She was a most beautiful child. She was born in South Africa. She was, she was just loved by everybody. Um, I've written some notes here, so I'm going to just go through them. Um, one of her nicknames at school when we first were lifting Nels Breaks, we moved around South Africa a little bit, was the Causa Princess because she, she got to be a little bit affluent in Causa. And she was a leader, a uh, house captain at school. She represented the school for chess, and she even represented the province for chess tournaments. And she also, oh, wow. yeah, she was really a beautiful, beautiful child, very smart. 
and she was um, a great gymnast. She went um, participated in some provincial gymnastics when she was about 12 or so or 10. I don't know. I can't remember exactly the times, but okay. Sure. And then when she was 13, we because we'd lived in Canada before we moved back to Canada uh, when she was 13. And then she was starting. And you said you had three girls, right? Yes, yes. I've got three girls. Laura is my oldest. Then I've got Claire Kelly and then Dakota. And then Dakota was, she was the youngest. She was 13. Claire Kelly was 15. And Laura was 17 when we moved back to Canada for our second time. So my four girls had a bit of a dotted around uh, childhood, but we did our best. We had them in private schools as much as we could and gave them as much as we could. Mm -hmm. And no wonder she was the princess. She was the baby. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) that's so true, so true. But, um, you know, she was she's such a great little person. I miss her so much. I miss her terribly. So she, when we first got to Canada, she was um, volunteering for the special with the Special Olympic kids, training them in gymnastics, which was just so lovely. And I mean, that just like warmed my heart because she was just getting into the community and seeing what she could do and help and everything. And then mm-hmm. she was back in gymnastics herself, training at a studio in Nanaimo. And she was a great, great kid, great beautiful girl but she in the gymnastics they weren't spotting her correctly if anybody knows about gymnastics she was doing a backflip and she broke her arm into both both arms in the forearm so I'm I'm not sure both bones and yeah both arms Mm -hmm. both bones and there was it was sticking through the skin and they rushed her to the hospital and then I met her there anyway long story short they decided the doctor decided and she was like 16 this decided that they would put plates in which I, I so disagreed with but I wasn't allowed to say anything because in Canada they the kids have their own rights it was her right to choose even though you know I'd spoken to other doctors and that and they said no the growth plate you know your bones are still growing so she shouldn't have had a plate in at such a young age but anyway it was just her journey and sadly you know she was in so much pain they put her on oxycontin got her started on that which freaked me Mm -hmm. and then when she stopped the oxy then I don't know she somehow started self-medicating getting stuff and started with marijuana and whatever else but she got back to her gymnastics and she got this was over a few years period, but she got back to gymnastics. She was back to doing handstands and having full use of her arm, even though she was Uh in a lot of pain. And especially in winter, she used to like be in so much pain because of the plates and everything. It's just that her her bones just hurt, you know, in her arm, which was, Uh, yeah. And then she had, yeah, it killed me because she had scars on the fore, you know, on the front and on the back, big, long scars. So she was a bit embarrassed about those. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Just hard. Just a lot to go through when you're going through those teenage years anyway. Yeah, exactly. So formative and you have such insecurities anyway. So then scars like that make it worse. And I don't know. Kids just so want to kind of feel like they're fit in and they're like everybody else. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Um, no. With her, her drug use, she'd, when we first went to Canada, she was mixing in with a very nice group of girls. And then her brain mm-hmm. changed and she started hanging out with girls that were older than her and that were smoking pot and doing other things. I don't know what else. Uh-huh. Well, we live on Vancouver Island. And then after school, oh, okay, hang on. Sorry, let me backtrack a bit. When I, we'd noticed her, she was smoking pot and everything. I sent her to Botswana for a few months, back to Africa to go and live with my sister in a tent in the middle of the bush. My sister used to manage like luxury safari uh, camps. Uh-huh. And so I sent her to go and live with my sister for a few months to try and get her like head straight and everything. And then she came back to mm-hmm. Canada and I thought, okay, great, everything's good. But she regressed the game into the drug scene. And then after school, she went to Vancouver to go and decided, no, she's going to go work there and 
teach gymnastics there and she got in with a very unsavory group of people very unsavory guy that wanted to marry her but he was just horrible and she brought him to the island to meet her she was quite a bit older than her and my husband just said absolutely not he's not giving his blessing for this marriage and you know I was trying to be I didn't I, of course I wanted to support my husband on this and support her so I was one of my friends had said okay just tell her okay just wait for your dad's blessing for the marriage and everything so she held it off and she never got married thank god he was just a, a monster of a person got her into all sorts of horrible drugs she moved back to Vancouver Island she was just she was her and I during her really bad drug period I know this sounds all over the road and I'm really sorry but no, um, no. she we really not got along for the longest time and we used to fight quite a bit but then when she moved back to Vancouver Island uh, she her and I started to get along very well and she got her own little place up the road from us she rented an apartment suite because you know she used to say well I'm old enough I can smoke drugs and they're legal now the marijuana had been legalized in Canada and she said, okay, you know, it's my house, my rules, and this is what she's going to do. So, but it, it turned out really, it was a good thing for her and I to have a little bit of space between us, even sure. though she was like 21 and she was on her own in her own little space. And she wasn't with the guy anymore? Not, no, thank God. She'd broken away from uh, him and he was. Sure, just, sure. So yeah. that helped your relationship too, right? Yes. Oh, he was just horrible. He'd said, you know, he was going to try and take her back, but then he he was going to put a restraining order against me so I wouldn't interfere. I mean, I, I did everything that I could. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed so much and I just intervened in their relationship as much as I could. <laughs> and then he got so right. fed up with me. He said, okay, well, we can get back together, but I'm putting a restraining order against your mom. And then, like, she realized, like, nobody's going to love you like your mother, you know? So nobody's going to love right. you like you know. Yeah, isn't that the truth? So uh, this horrible man disappeared out of her life. Thank you, God. Yay. Yeah, really. Lots of blessings along the way. And, you know, I used to go and have tea with her during the day and she'd invite us over for supper. Then she'd met another young man. He was so sweet. She, they started living together. Even I didn't approve of it, but you know what? Like, it's such a thing. Young people live together. that has got nothing to do with me. You know, like, it's not how I how I brought her up to be, but that's fine, you know, like. Well, and it's such a better choice, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. he was, he was. He, he was a, mm -hmm. a Look, my husband doesn't agree, but I mean, I, I really enjoyed this young man. I thought he was good for her because he didn't, he was very much into parkour and gymnastics and everything, pretty much like her. And he'd say, okay, you cannot smoke pot. If you're going to come do parkour with me, I don't know. Do you know what parkour is? No, I have no idea. It's when you see these crazy kids, like they run up walls and they do backflips. Oh. And yes, all, I've seen that. Yeah, crazy stuff. And he used to say, uh -huh. okay, you can come with me, but you're like, you're not allowed to have smoke pot, you're not allowed to drink, and you couldn't have it in your system because he, you know, you, you need to be so focused when you do that stuff. So he used uh -huh. to say, okay, if you're going to come with me, you know, you're not allowed to hang out with your friends at smoke pot because she would occasionally do it, and you're not allowed to drink, you know, the curtain, I would occasionally have a glass of wine together, which I so miss, you know, having a glass of wine with my daughter, which is, uh -huh. yeah, miss that so much too. Yeah. But uh, he, you know, he wasn't, didn't like any of that. So, you know. So that's a great influence on her, Oh, though, he was a right? fabulous, for me, I, that's the thing is that I look at that, and I believe that he really loved her. Yeah. Different people had different opinions. And mm -hmm. yeah, her friend just disagrees. But you know what? I suppose if you you talk to your girlfriend, you tell her different things about your relationship with mm -hmm. somebody as to what you tell your mom, you know. So I just saw how they were together. I would sometimes arrive and she wouldn't know that I was coming and they'd be sitting and playing guitar together. Oh, Dakota was very musically in inclined as well. Oh, she used to oh, play yeah. guitar and piano and they'd be sitting there singing together. And I thought, oh, this, this was beautiful for me, you know, it really was. Right. right. And you think about from the friend's perspective, if they were really into the drug scene and all of that and... They just see it as, oh, here's this guy that's being a stick in the mud that won't let her do this stuff that they like to do. So, of course, they're going to have a, a negative 
thing, right? Because people oh. that love them, I'm sure, said all sorts of like, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing that. And then so now her new boyfriend is sort of saying, well, you really can't do that and do this stuff. Yeah. They take that and in, in as far as that goes, too. Oh, you know what? I've never looked at it from that perspective. But thank you. That actually makes sense. You know, it makes sense. I, I, I try and I love her friend and I, but I've never thought of it from that perspective of why they never got along. I just, that, that's what makes yeah. sense. <laughs> of course. What a like, that's like a slap in the face. I should have seen that from before. Well, I'm yeah. glad it could be helpful to you today. Yeah. <laughs> that little bit of insight. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes from, someone from the outside can see things easier than you can from the inside, I think. So true. So true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, we had a lovely Christmas together in 2017 um, with my uh, my husband had gone over to South Africa to spend Christmas with his family and I was going to be joining him after Christmas. Dakota was getting her passport sorted out so she could, you know, my husband wasn't sure if he was going to stay in South Africa or come back to Canada. Things were changing politically. And you know what, my husband really battled in Canada with the cold weather, with just everything. He really, really battled with a lot of depression in Canada. So he just said, okay, you know, he's going back to South Africa and then I would join him after Christmas. And then Dakota was going to plan to come and join him if he was going to stay in March or so. She was getting her passport sorted out. And my other girls, they were all set up and fine in Canada, doing well. After Christmas, we'd had a beautiful Christmas together. I'm so thankful for that last Christmas. It was was with my oldest daughter, Laura's uh, mother-in-law and her family and their family. It was just, it was beautiful. It was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then I went back to South Africa, I think on the 29th. We'd, sorry, we celebrated Dakota's birthday on the 1st of December, before Christmas, obviously. Mm -hmm. It was lovely. And it was uh, my husband and myself and Dakota's boyfriend and her. And, you know, the boyfriend said he'd, um, in front of us, he'd wanted to marry Dakota and, you know, like mm-hmm. he said, but he wants her to stop all the drugs before, you know, stop the smoking in the pot before. And, you know, so she was, she was loved. She was so loved. Mm-hmm. Then we get this horrible phone call three o'clock in the morning in South Africa. And it was my uh, brother and he just, he said, I want to speak to your husband. I said, like, it's three o'clock in the morning. No, you know, and he said, uh, Aaron, it's urgent. I need to speak to Charles and gave us the horrible news that Dakota had passed away oh. for the longest time. I couldn't even say that she'd passed away. And only like really this year, I've, I've had to accept that it, she took her own life. And it's my oldest daughter was the first one to grasp that. And none of us wanted to believe it. I didn't want to believe it for the longest time because she'd had, she was been in lots of counseling and she'd had the doctors had given her so many prescription drugs. She, they were all there. She never took them. And this is, you know, could have been a moment of madness. She'd had a fight with her boyfriend and she took her own life and on her yoga swing anyone wants to know I, people always ask how and like, does it really make a difference I sometimes I get really angry that people right. will ask that it's like what difference does it make she's got but anyway yeah how long after Christmas was that then that was on the I still get confused with the dates but apparently mm-hmm. because of the time change and that yeah. it was the 9th of January in Canada okay. so I can't remember if it was 8th in South Africa I don't know but it was I'm on sure. the 9th of January but it wasn't that long after you had seen her no we I'd last seen her I think I flew there on the, the 29th or 30th around right at the end of December and, you know she'd given me such a big hug <sighs> Sorry, <laughs> you know, they kind of gave the best hugs ever. She literally gave the best hugs ever. And the first thing I, yeah. it was three o'clock in the morning, and I don't know when you find out something shocking like that. I just wanted to scream, and my husband said, "Don't scream, whatever you do, don't scream," because we were in a guest house, and then he he just told me not to scream, and I just said, 
oh, you know, I came and I just said, thank you, God, for letting me have her for as long as I did. And as long as we did. And I was just lay on the bed and I was crying. My husband wanted to go out for a walk and he went out walking. He said, do you want to come? And I said, no, I'll see you later. And I lay down and cried and cried and and then I walked to the beach. I thought I'll find him there, but I didn't. I, yeah. We walked and then we eventually bumped into each other at about six in the morning, uh, just screaming and crying on the beach. And, you know, I've always, um, I always said to the girls, you know, in South Africa growing up with so much uncertainty with the crime and everything, I used to always say to the girls, you know, like, you never know when you're going to die. Just please you know, behave every day, do your best every day. Uh, only God knows when you're going to go, but just I always used to reinforce with them, oh, which is horrible, I know, but, you know, you, we never know when we're going to be taken. So just do your best right. every day. Right. Yeah, and it, it, we, it says that in Psalm 139, only God knows when we are going to die and that we have to make the most of every day. So, you know, just, I, I just, I know that the, I get more comfort because I know that Dakota's with Jesus now. I don't care what people say, you know, but Jesus came more real to me because if you can, you can feel God, you can feel the Holy Spirit with you a lot of the time. I, I'm yeah. sure you feel that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I know, I guess, thank you, God. It's like my saving grace that she's with him. And she's with Jesus. Right. And, you, and you think about how you know you couldn't do it on your own. Oh, absolutely right? not. Like yeah. this getting up and doing things every day, this can't be just you. No, no, no. Because absolutely. you don't have the strength and you don't have the power. No, absolutely I think that's not. why it always drives me crazy when people tell me how strong I am because I'm not. Yeah. And, and none of us are. And when you have a faith that you can rely on yeah. that you can draw from that yeah. Yeah. to be able to help you to get up every day because yeah. it is a struggle just to get up every yes. day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, um, from a mother's perspective as well, then you, it's, you sort of take a step back and you think, how oh, this is maybe like Mary must have, must have been killer for Mary yeah. to watch her son being crucified. And, and you just like, Whoa, you know, I, I know. I, I feel sad for the moms that don't have God in their life, that don't have Jesus, or people that have been, they don't have faith. You know, I just sort of think, mm-hmm. oh gosh, how do, you, how do you manage, lady? Just how do you manage? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny how I think about Mary in a totally different way now. Oh yeah, yeah. In a way I never, I never yeah. did before. Yeah, yeah. I'm not even Catholic, and I just think, okay, no, me, just, either. Yeah. me either. Me either. Yeah. I'm not Catholic at all. And that's why I've, I I mean, I have not been one to focus on that. But yeah. it just, I can't remember how long afterwards it really hit me. Yeah. Yeah. How that must have been. And just, yeah. It must be very And, and I want to think back too. I, I think about with me, I felt like I couldn't believe it had happened. Right? I, yeah. I lived every day like, there is no way this happened. This is not my life. This yeah. is not my yeah. life. He's yeah. fine. This is not my life. But you were not there. Oh, you were yeah. on the other side of the world. Yeah. So yeah. how much more would you be feeling like this can't have really happened? Yeah. Yeah. Horrible. 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 I just, uh, horrible. The last time, before that, the last time I um, had got a wake up call, somebody had died with my mother when I was 11. So now, you know, like, oh. So, you know, sleep has been very hard for me because you never like want to go back to sleep, you know, like what is going to happen when I sleep? But then I have to like calm my mind, calm my mind, you know, okay, whatever is going to happen in life, whether I was in South Africa, whether I was up the road, you know, um, you can't elude death. You know, I've, um, I've got a dear Muslim friend, a lady that said to me, she told me about it, um, some it was something in their Quran that it said, you know, somebody came knocking at the door and it was death that had come to knock to get somebody. They they'd heard about death was coming to their door to get their some their person, and so they tried to hide the person and death still came. So it doesn't matter. And and we know, 
Psalm 139 says, like, God knows when we're going. And, and um, so whether I would have been right next to her, something else could have happened. Whatever yes. it was, it was her time to leave. And it's just, you know, I've always said, thank you, God, for that I had her so long. You know, I just I have to be right. thankful because she blessed my life so much. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. That's definitely true, 100%. But it's uh, easy to think about the time that you should have had and all of those oh, yeah, too. yeah. And I try not though, to go there. I try not to go right. there. Right. I was going to say, it's, but your mind does seem to wander there and then you have to take it back, right? So yeah. I, that's what I hear from you. I hear yeah. from you like constantly needing to bring yourself back to yeah. that. Let's think about the 23 years that we did have together. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And what a fun person she was. She was so... Dakota used to, she was doing some Bible study with different people and, but she also was um, very much into energy and which it makes me think, okay, like, cause now I do believe in all the energy stuff and I'm, I'm looking to Christian studies for yogis because a lot of Christians won't do yoga or don't want to do yoga because mm-hmm. of the connotation or the idea that it was, it's a, just a, um, a religion well I've realized no it's not a religion and it's not it's not specific like Muslims could do yoga Hindus Christians you know it's it's a worldwide form of exercising uh, and of worship you know I suppose you know what I suppose if you who are you going to worship when you're on your mat it, <laughs> you know that's right but it but it is your spirituality right yes. and you can ha- your spirituality can go in many different ways yeah, and if yeah. that's a good way for you to be able to kind of be in touch with your spiritual self yeah then i think that's great yeah yeah so so you were did you do yoga before i started yoga in okay like i little did a little bit in south africa because i had a a dislocated shoulder so I started it and my church was like, oh, no, yoga is so bad. But the physiotherapist said to me, you know, like, maybe start trying to do yoga. So I did. And the church was like, oh, no, that's not good. But I just thought, okay, you know what? And the more I got into it, I thought, okay, you know, Jesus probably did yoga. I don't know. You know, like, is there, <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it's helping me to heal my body. And right. then I stopped and it's it. not. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't think a... you need to jump to badness. It yeah. doesn't. I mean, we just talked about how it's it's yeah. looking at your spiritual self. How yeah. how can your spiritual self just in general be bad? I it... don't know. I don't know. That's what the church it said. So as soon as my shoulder was healed, I stopped doing the yoga because I wanted to be like a, a good Christian and, and be a good um, role model for my daughters. You know, like the, the I did my that Proverbs thirty one woman is. <laughs> an impossible role to follow, but she's something else. But anyway, <laughs> so when we got to Canada, then and the girls were in their teens, I was going nuts. Like some of the stuff they were doing. I, I when we first got there, and we'd drive down the street. Now, please remember, they'd come from a South African background, three teens, and they used to wear school uniforms. And I, I kept the clothes in a minimalist. They had their activity clothes, gymnastics clothes, ballet clothes, or horse riding clothes. And I used to keep their clothes at minimum. And also I was made sure they were modest with what they wore. Mm-hmm. So we got to Canada and they'd walk, we'd drive down the street and they'd say, oh, look at those girls, the nice clothes they're almost wearing. So they know straight away they'd think, <laughs> okay. And then they started buying these clothes themselves. Oh, my gosh, it used to freak me out. So I'd do washing and I'd throw things behind the washing machine. <laughs> and then, oh, no, it was so bad because then they'd all fight. Oh, you stole my top, you stole the shorts. And I was just throwing things Like, behind. no, they're all behind the washing machine, actually, but... <laughs> It's just like, I don't know where they are, you know. (laughs) Oh, goodness. (laughs) But, um, yeah. But I I was getting a lot of, I was very, very stressed. And I was either going to have a glass of wine every night or, you know, like sometimes two, three. And it was just too much. Or I thought, okay, you know what, I'm going to be bad. I'm going to go back to yoga. I'm going to do it. (laughs) (laughs) And... I, I think doing... that's so funny that that's like the rebellious you is doing yoga. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I was like, oh, 
you know, because otherwise I would just be drinking and drinking and drinking, trying to calm myself down. Well, yeah, down. I mean, clearly, I would think the church would think yoga would be better than drinking. Yeah, yeah. So, but and also, okay. I was away from South Africa, the church in Canada, they didn't, I didn't even tell them, I just like did it. And okay. um, it, it seemed okay, nobody said anything. And then I'd take the girls with me to yoga and we'd all... All of us would practice together, which was great. And a fabulous gym in Nanaimo. It was, it was like, that was some of my best times, you know. And, oh, it was lovely. Really good. You know, so things. I have to say, before COVID, we had yoga that would happen at our church. Oh, my so, goodness. That's, <laughs> just, yeah. yeah, things have changed. Things have moved on. Things it's have beautiful. Changed. Yeah, yes. yeah. Now, that's... with COVID, obviously, the yoga ended up going away. But yeah. I'm sure it will be back. I'm sure it will be, too. You know, because I think people are realizing it's not a religion. It's, you know, you're you're in touch with God. You're creating this energy. You're like, you know, I, and yeah. sometimes, you know what, now, even now when I do yoga, sounds crazy but I can feel Dakota with me and mm-hmm. um, I can just feel her oh you know I feel so good and so every day I'm on my mat you know and mm-hmm. um, I pray on my mat and yeah every day I'm on my mat Dakota and I started our yoga teacher training together and uh, she was fabulous at yoga but sometimes you get a bit bored she was a gymnast and she was a pole right. dancer and and she was super flexible so she could really and get into any pose but we'd started our teacher training together and she started because of the prompting of my niece who had said she'd done her teacher training and said to Dakota come work with me in Bali and uh, you can teach yoga so Dakota had that idea to do that and we started our training together you know what after she left I said okay after about four months of lying around I don't know how long it took you before you started getting up and going around but after about four months, I was in so much pain. My body was in, every cell of my body was in pain and crying and crying. And the pain didn't, wouldn't leave me. I was just like, God, I was just heartbroken and in so much physical pain. And I started, I looked on line, grief yoga, yoga for grief. I couldn't find much. I couldn't find anything. And so I just started doing yoga with Cassandra who, she's a Canadian lady because I thought, well, if I can't find anything, I'm going to do it with Cassandra because she had mm-hmm. start. She had. You went back to Canada. Did yes. you go back to Canada? Really, yes. Yeah. Right After a few days, uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter, and right. even my middle daughter, they organized our flights back to Canada, and um, I. It's sort of like a blur, you know. Like somehow we arrived back in Canada. I think we went back to the went back to our home in Nanaimo then somehow back with they did the funeral in uh in Vancouver which was sort of something else to talk about but I mean that's just where my daughter chose it to be done mm-hmm. um right. it's sort of like a blur back then but of course yeah and course. I'm thankful that my daughter did that I don't even know how long after Dakota left that we had the the funeral I honestly don't know. Uh, I sort of wish I'd been more involved in it and helping. I I never did an autopsy. I wish I'd done that. But, you know, uh, either way, it doesn't make a difference. It was her time to go, and it's just something I have to learn to live with and always be thankful. Yes, thank you, God, you know, that I had her for that amount of time. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I started, so anyway, you're yeah. four months in and you decide, you know what, let's try yoga. Let's yeah. see. So what did that do for you? What did yoga do? Well, the 10 minutes, because uh, Cassandra had 10 minute yoga things. And I'm like, whoa, you know, I, I could just start feeling relief in my body. And I wasn't, I didn't start every day. I just started a couple of times a week because it, it took effort and energy just to put out my mat to go and do things for 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. But um, yeah, I started yoga and the more I got into doing it and getting back into it and realizing, you know, my body is not in so much pain anymore. Right. I think by about August, I started looking around. I thought, okay, you know what? It's time to finish this for Dakota and I and to you know, make her nice 
talked a little bit about doing it together, maybe as a business, but it wasn't anything right. set solid. She was, I think, more focused on going off and doing it with her cousin, which would have been obviously much more cool than doing it with her mom. Yeah. <laughs> I found a place because I, I was thought of going back to South Africa to finish it for us there. The place we'd started in Canada, Dakota wasn't keen on it. Um, she felt the classes were overcrowded, too many people in the teacher training at the time, which it was pretty full. And she did, she was right about that. So I found a place in Mexico in Playa del Carmen, a beautiful lady at Yoga by the Sea with Ariel. And I came down, I flew down to Mexico and I, did my I think it was three or four week training mm -hmm. and then from then it's just moved on it's progressed I flew, went back to Canada and I started doing just teaching another grieving mom and she'd lost her son-in-law and her um, husband so it's sort of grieving mom but it was her son-in-law and I started teaching her and then a friend of mine said well can you start teaching me and so beginners yoga as well so that's why I teach beginners and grief yoga uh -huh. it's progressed it's it's just progressed and then I I got in, invited to teach at a women's shelter and a place that's got uh, young girls that are recovering from addictions and anorexia I was teaching there while I was in Nanaimo um, and then we came you know we we try and get away during the winter to Mexico and we came back to Mexico and I with, I started Zoom classes teaching via Zoom. Mm -hmm. And that's been, look, Zoom is a big challenge for me. It's been very challenging, the Zoom. But once I get it figured out and let the people into the class, my, my yoga is great. But um, yeah. just the beginning of Zoom is, was a bit hectic for me. And, and I believe Dakota is helping me. I know God's helping me with this. I don't know, people say God, Jesus, the universe, whatever. Um, whatever you want to call him out, uh, just my God, you know, and Jesus is with me. And I feel that I'm being helped. You know, Dakota's helping me. I, I'm, I'm feeling supported in this journey with yoga. And I want to be able to help other moms because I know, well, not just my other moms, but other grievers, but particularly moms. I know that the, the relief that comes, you know, from moving your body scientifically i'm reading a book like the the um, body keeps the score and how i've seen other moms they internalize everything and they don't do exercise and they'll put on a lot of weights or get different illnesses diseases it's just you know you're going to take your body one way or another after grief and uh, i've realized that you know the the relief that comes from doing yoga teaching yoga sharing my love of yoga it's 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 great it's it's a beautiful thing that I can do for myself and for others too and and I you know it's um I realized I wouldn't have been able to help other people if if Dakota hadn't left this wouldn't have been my journey so I also try and look okay you know it makes me I feel really deeply satisfied when I can see a student who's progressed and I can see oh you're you're doing better you know it's helped you to heal your heart a bit because mm -hmm. I wouldn't have had that being able to share that if I hadn't been through this journey myself mm -hmm. I know I I keep it all here in my neck and my yeah. shoulders yeah, it all just gets so tight all the time, and then yeah. I have headaches all the time. Yeah, you yeah. know, originally, I mean, I've always had headaches, and I've had history of some neck things. But you know, I remember right after the accident, people thinking that it had to do with uh, the accident, right? And yeah. and even give me getting some physical therapy, it was all kind of covered by our auto insurance policy, yeah. all of my neck stuff. But, you know, I wonder now, as we're three and a half years and I still battle with the same things, I think it's more the grief. I think yeah. it's more the that I hold that tension there because it yeah. tends to get even bad when I try to sleep at night. I'll yeah. Just, yeah. I'm just in so, so tense and, and then wake up not feeling well and and things like that. So I think 
there is that grief and stress from the trauma, from all kinds of trauma yeah. can really end up affecting your body. Yeah, no, definitely it does. Well, I'm like, I'm excited that you're going to do the, the four week brief show. I am excited too. So I I'm want really to hear excited. how you feel afterwards, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So then you can say that you can go on to my, because um, <laughs> I ask people, please give me reviews, you know, it helps with in the search engines. And um, I said, please I know leave this a is review. what I tell people about yeah. the podcast too. Leave reviews for the podcast because yeah. it helps people find you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So then you can see, okay, look, no, this is a load of rubbish and she doesn't help at all. Or you can say, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Yoga does help, you know, the movement. And the nice thing I've just recently done um, a, a, a course just on trauma and the the way you sequence your class, your your especially you being a doctor, you'll know you're you're stimulating your um, parasympathetic and your different systems. Is what's it called the mm -hmm. the ANS? You celebrate. You're stimulating different parts of the mm -hmm. body, and I can't even remember everything. But any grieving mom knows our brains are a little bit fried. But the good thing is with yoga is that I, I do the things before I do. You know, before I'm teaching a class, I'll go and I'll practice the class, inculcate it into my body, see how it feels, see how it works. And then I realized, okay, this is, what's it called? This parasympathetic. And what is the other? Yeah. What's the other system? Uh, I mean, you, well, you can have the sympathetic and parasympathetic. Yeah. Okay. Sympathetic. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you've got to stimulate one and then the other. It's a different movement. Yeah. You're, you're bringing it back and forth to bring wholeness. And, and then we're working on the vagus nerve as well. And you know, it's, about the vagus nerve I'm sure and how mm -hmm. we can stimulate that and just like oh, this is a gift from God you know like thank you God that you know I can heal my body and I can help other moms my niece said that I should rather target um, young girls so that then nobody's going to be you know take their life and try and do preventative but I mean once after the fact the mom's lost a child they just I'm, I'm here to help you. I know it, it's so funny because there are so many good things that you can do yeah right yeah. and people are like oh you should do this you should do this and yeah and and they look at you and they think oh she went down this wrong path kind of early on if someone maybe had been to help her earlier you know yeah. those type of things those are great causes yeah but if that's not what's calling your calling yeah yeah you know that's if that's not what god's called you to do yeah you need to do what god's called you to do yeah there are plenty of other people that can do those type of things that they're yeah. called to do yeah too. yeah you're actually yeah. so right and then it comes back again to like that psalm 139 only god knows when they're going to leave. So yeah. whether I help them or not, but I mean, after the fact, they're from the moms, your child is gone. Let's just pick up the pieces where we can yeah. pick up the leftover pieces. Right. Because you do need to continue to move forward. Yeah. Even though it's so, so tremendously hard. Yeah. 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 Every day. So what are the differences between what you might think of as kind of a beginner yoga and this more trauma-centered grief yoga. Okay, well, with the trauma-centered yoga, it's a lot of it is just about the language. It's your, okay. your, the language that you're using so that it's not triggering and it's not, okay. yeah, it's, it's, it's mostly just about the, the language that we're using. Mm -hmm. I don't know, sometimes I, I think... So this is the trauma yoga that I did is it can be for many related people that have had different sure. traumas. But I think for moms, I think maybe a bit of triggering so that crying on your mat is a relief, you know, and right. you can have this time. So it's, I don't know, I, I'm still thinking about it. And you, we use trauma sensitive language, which mm -hmm. I'm using for teaching moms and other people that have had loss in their life well it's for me it feels so m just much more comfortable yeah. to be around other grieving moms oh isn't that instead the of truth? just a group of other women yeah yeah there's a group of other women if i would be doing yoga or something and i suddenly start crying they're all going to kind of look at me weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I'm in a group of grieving moms and I start crying, 
they're gonna be like, oh, okay. Yeah. She's feeling that right now. Yeah. I understand that. Mm -hmm. I've been there. They're not going to panic about it. No. They might offer you a little bit of comfort and say, oh, this must be hard for you. Or, oh, you know, just Accepted. they're not going to panic, though, which is what other people do. Yeah. They all jump to what is wrong? Yeah, what is wrong yeah. with her? What can we do to help her? Yeah. What can we make things better? And another grieving mom isn't going to jump to help you. Yeah. yeah. They're just going to be more comfortable sitting mm -hmm. in the dark space, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that is this so true, so true. Funny, I mean, this morning I was just because because I'm working on the the grief presentation that is coming up in in later on in March, and I, you know this is going to be an ongoing sort of thing. But um, I, you know, like just looking at photos again of Dakota, and like, oh gosh, it hurts my heart so much. And I had a bit of a cry, and then I pulled up my mat, okay, do some stuff just to bring more stability back to my mind and to make my body not so sore. Right. That's great. I love that. I love that you can find something yeah. to do. That I, I think that's going to be a great tool for a lot of us to be able to use. Yeah. And, you know, talk to God. Or just talk. Yeah. I mean, so I just talked to... I see a lot of teenage depression and anxiety in my oh, practice, shit. which I've yeah. talked about. And I do think I see more of it now. And I don't know if it's partially because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I think it's at least partially because I get it more, yeah. having lived through losing Andy, that I yeah. think people feel more comfortable talking yeah. to someone who is okay being in the dark space. Yeah. But, but anyway, I saw two sisters yesterday and I asked each of them individually, what do you do when you're feeling overwhelmed mm -hmm. with your sadness or with your worries or with your whatever? And they both said, well, I go to my room and I shut the door and I just try to go to sleep. Mm. And I, I, it just made me so sad. Yeah, yeah. And I said to each of them, we need to find something else for you to be yeah. able to do during yeah. those sad, dark times. Because I think just you locking yourself away in your room is not going to be the best strategy for you. We've yeah. got to find different strategies for you. Yeah. But this seems like such a beautiful thing yeah. that you can try to now work through it. So yeah. that's what you're doing, right? Yeah. You're working through it. We're not yeah. just, let's just ignore it and shove it away yeah. Yeah. and go do this instead. Like, let's work through those emotions and through those feelings, Yeah. you know, because it takes mm. work. Grief yeah. is work. So yes. much work. Yeah, it is. And it if is. that can be a tool in the toolbox to help get you to do the work, Mm -hmm. What a beautiful, amazing thing. Yeah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Exactly. Thank you, God, for blessing us with this yeah. ability to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how long have you been doing this now? So you've been, it started well, I, out by just kind of one person asking you, and then it seems like it's slowly been growing. Yeah, since 2019, I was just teaching a little bit, little bit. And then this year I said, no, okay, I'm going to start it as, the, well, no, not this year, because you already, I already forget it's already much. I decided, okay, because you know what, like I've seen my daughters, I've seen my husband, I feel they've been helped so much. Dakota's helped them. I really believe that. And like my one daughter is doing a fabulous business and my other daughter, like she became a teacher's assistant while being a full-time mom, you know, she's studied uh -huh. that and I've seen the success of my husband as oh you know I've got to do more than just help one 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 and also it took confidence just to get back and start helping people more and I, I decided I think June last year I started to build a website you know because I just I pray God help me do something more you know and it's and I've, right. I've help me help other people yeah right just, yeah you know what peace this bring, brings you yeah. and you know when you're going through your tough days how this can bring comfort to you. Yeah. So you feel like this is my gift. Yeah. Yeah. And my husband always thought, oh, no, you know, he's, he's <laughs> harder on it. But, um, you know, my daughters cheered me on. Laura and Claire Kelly have cheered me on. And you're doing good, mom. And Laura, she's like a, a master on the internet. She's got a business, not on the internet, on the Instagram. She runs different courses and it's, um, B squared's 
social or something like that, but she's got all these courses that she sells online and people love her and she's got like thousands of followers, so many with the, you know, the K, so it shows how many thousands that she's got. And she sells these courses and she's a mom and she gifted me this course and this course and, you know, to try and help me to promote it mm -hmm. and do the business. And, and my other daughter, like, she, they're just my little cheerleaders. They've been helping right. me. Yeah, and my little, another, my grandson has also helped me so much. And he's a little darling. Just, you know, I, I just feel loved and supported and moving forward doing this yoga and sharing it and helping people. And you know what, if I make a million bucks, that's great. If I don't make a million bucks, well, then my husband's going to have to work a bit harder. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I need a million, but, you know, it, it can make a living just. Uh, because I had I had a lovely, lovely job. I worked for a beautiful company in Nanaimo doing advertising. Love those people. And but there's just no way I can go back to no. talking to people on a daily basis like that. And the thing is with yoga, I am not really comfortable around other moms so much now or other people. I just like my anxiety levels just shoot up. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've had gone out to dinner twice since Dakota's left with other people and it, it didn't work out, did not work out. And the last dinner was uh, some ladies, it was going to be a friend of mine's wedding. And I went out and I, I just like, I had to leave. I'm such bad company. So now I, when I get out to talk to people, it's, I'm happy to be around a grieving mom. We can relate. Right. And <laughs> Isn't that just funny how oh, it is? But yeah. it's so it, true. Yeah, we can relate. Like you just feel more comfortable. It's like, yeah. now you're my people. Yeah. These are my people These now. Are, this is my tribe of ladies, you know, my, right. my grieving moms. And then the yoga people. There's, I can be around yoga people because they're not... We'll talk about yoga and that's about it, you know, and right. grieving moms. and. And even then, it's, you know what it's like. You keep your time limited so that you can retreat back and just uh, be alone. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I decided, okay, this is a business. I'm doing it. I'm putting things out. I did a, an eight-week course on chakras um, at the end of last year, which sold, and it was good. And then I said, no, okay, do another, I'm going to do another online series. And that's great. And I've started selling this one a bit and, and, and I'm happy you know it just I, I don't want I want my daughters and I want my husband and my, my grandkids to see you know like I didn't dissolve to nothing when my daughter died you know I've right. picked up the pieces and with the strength of God I've been able to live a life you know and and help people right right that's what I was just going to say oh. and live a life helping people Oh. And spreading a little bit of hope and healing. Yeah, hope, right? love, healing. It's yeah, you know, we're here on a journey to help each other. So yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, what we talked about, how we feel like more comfortable in our tribe, it's that when we are with others, it ends up sometimes the conversations feel just trivial and not important. And yeah. It's it's just that your perspective changes so yeah. much yeah. after you go through this. I think yeah. that's it. It just changes you and your perspective. And some things that used to seem kind of important now just don't. And yeah. so then it, it can be hard to relate. Yeah. That's why I feel I've lost friends. I've, even some of my siblings don't talk to me. And that's fine. But just, you know what? I'm probably hard to communicate with, hard to get along mm -hmm. with. And mm -hmm. I think grieving yeah. moms just sort of get it. And, and if we sit in silence with each other, that's what we do. And if we talk, it's, you know, there's no that expectations, no pressure. Right, 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 right. Well, and the one thing, too, that's been a bit of a blessing about the pandemic is had that not happened, you probably wouldn't have thought about the idea of doing this via Zoom. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Like yeah, exactly, exactly. And the, the other thing about the, the pandemic, which has been such a blessing for me, because my doctor and my psychiatrist said, because eventually that is how I was going, um, so not healing as fast as they wanted me to, that I had to start seeing a psychiatrist. And they would say, okay, you've got to go out and have a go walk with somebody. You've got to get together with a friend, have a cup of coffee. And then when the pandem pandemic hit, I didn't have to speak to anybody <laughs> at all. And it was just like, oh, 
I've got peace. I've got, I'm alone and I've got peace and I can talk to my daughter and I can talk to God and spend time with my husband. That's it, you know. I started listening to podcasts. That's how I found you as well, because reading is very difficult. I think you probably know. And Mm -hmm, podcasts, you can sit and listen to other grieving moms that feel this lady's heart, you know. Yeah, right, right. And feel that realness. Yeah, yeah. Well, I am so excited with what you're doing and really excited I can kind of be part of the beginning in in some ways of you kind of opening up and spreading out and doing more so I just know you're going to do amazing things and help so many people and Mm -hmm. I'm excited to be a part of it so thank thank you so much for sharing Dakota thank you for sharing yoga with us tell people now how they can sign up for future classes how they can learn more about you how they can follow you on social media all of those things Okay, so um, my, I've got a website. It's yogawitherinb.com. And then I'm on Instagram and that... There it is, yoga with Aaron B. Yes, yes, uh, Beginners and Trauma Yoga. Okay, and mm-hmm. then my website, yogawitherinb.com. And then I'm also on Facebook. And um, those are the best ways to find me. And I will be, yes. you know, like with... I want to see how this one goes, the you know, the shorter 30 minute course, you know, 30 minute yoga, I've got some free 10 minute yoga, which people can try and see if it is for you before you sign up. I mean, sometimes 10 minutes is all that you can really do. But you know, if you 30 minutes, it's they're going to be easy grief, you know, focused classes so that you might just have a take 30 minutes for yourself and just heal your body. Try off with the 10 minutes, see how that goes. And, you know, and I'd love to hear once, even from you, if you find 30 minutes is too long to start with the yoga practice, then I can cut it back. But it's it's been so good for me when also just teaching other moms or other grievers and I'm, I'm seeing, okay, they could only start off like with 30 minutes. 30 minutes was their maximum. And, and a lot of that was spent in meditation. And then now some of them are up to an hour. And when I'm teaching a person and I see... And I, I just taught one lady yesterday and I, I said, Deborah, you know, like, look at you, look how you have progressed. And, you know, she's feeling better in her body and it warms my heart to yes. see, you know, and then she just said to me, oh, this is your calling. You know, this is, well, what did she say? Yeah. Something about, you know, it, it, this is, uh, what is it when it's, you know, your God given gift? Mm-hmm. Um, it, mm-hmm. this is your gift Erin and I'm like oh thank yeah. you <laughs> that's, oh, yeah. that's so beautiful yeah that's so, so beautiful I'm very thankful yes yes well thanks again for being on and I look forward to doing yoga with you oh thank you Marcy it's so lovely meeting you and love and hugs to you Thanks for listening. If you found this helpful or would like to support the podcast, please leave a five-star rating and comment. To help financially, you can text Andy's Mom to the number 53555 or visit the donate page on andysmom.com. Your donations are secure and tax-deductible, and we are now able to accept Venmo, PayPal, and Apple Pay. Always Andy's Mom is a registered 501c3 organization and can receive donations through smile.amazon.com Thrive in Financial, and Benevity, amongst others. Marcy loves hearing from listeners. Please feel free to reach out to her via email at marcy at andysmom.com. Also, be sure to sign up for the email list to receive weekly updates as well as pictures of all of Marcy's guests and their children. Together, let's work to inspire hope one day at a time.